Welcome back. So we are going to start right away with the questions uh, that you asked over Zoom. If you have questions in the lecture hall, uh, of course, we will also uh, address them and then we'll proceed with the quiz game. Um, okay, so the next question we had in the chat was, uh, can you ask questions during the exam? Um, not exactly. So our goal here is fairness. So we, we, it's a very large number of people taking the exam. We want fair conditions for everybody. Uh, that's the first reason why we limit the, 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 the questions. And the second one is social distancing. We try to avoid uh, contact uh, 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 as much as we can. So we, 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 we do not answer questions uh, on the content for that reason, right? It's all in the Moodle quiz. However, however, at the end of the exam, you will have an ungraded text box in which you could you can put any concerns or uh, if you think that there is a mistake somewhere or something, you can put it in the box. Uh, and then we will, when we grade the exam, we look at these comments. And uh, if, if there are errors in the questions that you found and, and you wrote it there, then we will, of course, uh, 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 take a look at that, right? Uh, it's not that uh, we just blindly take the grades from the computer. That's not how it works. We actually spend some time uh, double checking the, the, that the solutions are correct and so on. For example, if we notice that almost everybody got a question wrong, then maybe actually they got it right and we were wrong, right? So we always double check these things. Uh, and that includes the, uh, the little text box at the end, right? So uh, we, we, we do not answer questions uh, during the exam uh, for these reasons, but write it down in the text box uh, if you have uh, any concerns, right? Uh, I hope it answers your question. All right, let me go to the next one. Will the quiz question be recorded too? Yes, absolutely, it will be recorded and put it on YouTube uh, as well. Wonderful. And uh, material from the recommended readings uh, or only required? So uh, as far as I know, and that's the recommendation, the TAs are relying on the mandatory reading section, right? Do you confirm that, Monica? Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, only exactly. the mandatory reading material uh, is considered for preparing the exam questions. Yeah, uh, the recommended readings, however, do not underestimate it because it it uh, strengthens and deepens your knowledge, which in turn facilitates uh, the, the learning, the, the mandatory readings and the material, right? But indeed, it's just the mandatory readings that are technically for the exam, right? But don't forget that, uh, do, do, do not view a course or a lecture in general as learning by heart everything there is in the material. It's also about uh, conceptualizing and, and understanding how things work, uh, the architecture and, and the big ideas, right? And it's not zero or one, right? It's, it's really about the whole mindset and the ecosystem and so on, right? In order to reproduce the reasonings, all right? So you can really focus on the mandatory readings if, if you want to prioritize. Um, oh yeah, I see another about the Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, I, 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 let me answer that. Can we not ask questions if we have a problem with the setup? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, when, when I said you cannot ask questions, it's about the contents uh, of the quizzes, right? Um, but about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the problem with the, uh, the setup, of course, if you have a problem like your screen freezes or you crash the entire computer and so on, then of course, you should immediately raise your hands uh, and, and ask for help. There will be people, not only the TAs, but also technical staff from ETH, uh, from the education technology team uh, who will come and assist you. In the worst case, we change you to another computer, you know, a, a blank, a, a fresh computer. Uh, of course, you will lose whatever you put in the notebook if, if that happens, but then you can start uh, on a different machine, right? Of course, the Moodle answers will still be there. Um, but um, but uh, yes, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, how it works. And the reason it's very important to immediately raise your hands if you have a, an issue that completely blocks you is that we note the time down at which you raised your hands so that we credit you back the time that it takes to resolve the issue. So do not stay for five or 10 minutes trying to solve it by yourself. Do, do not do that. If you're blocked, raise your hands, right? That's, uh, that's very important. And then you will have extra time at the end uh, automatically added by the, by the technical staff. 
Uh, how are the points related to the grades? Well, uh, this is, uh, uh, the, 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 there is a, it's basically part of the grading, right? So this is, uh, uh, the, the, there is a mapping from the marks, it's called marks uh, in the exam and then grades at the end. We will give you the conversion scales uh, during the exam review, right? So this, uh, this, uh, this will be publicly available and then you'll see transparently how your mark was, uh, was mapped to, uh, uh, to a grade. Uh, when will you get the grade for the exam? Whenever ETH uh, releases it, we are not allowed to tell you your grades. It has to be going via, uh, uh, via ETH. Uh, and uh, typically it's done a few weeks uh, after the exam. Of course, if it's at the end of the session, maybe less uh, or towards the beginning of the semester, right? And then there's an exam review. You can actually view uh, the correct solutions and uh, double check what your mark was, how it worked how it was converted to a grade, that we credited your bonus points correctly and so on. This is all done transparently and you can double check. Uh, there will be no break during the exam, uh, but you are of course allowed to go uh, to the toilets if you need to, uh, accompanied by, uh, by one of the TAs, but the time is not credited, right? So it's up to you uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to take that into account, right? So we, we, we do not credit you back the time uh, if this is it, all right? It's like in any exam, actually, that's the same for a written exam on paper. It's exactly the same idea. Right, do we have any more questions? Uh, one more, uh, yeah. Uh, translation software, uh, no, it has to be a paper dictionary. If you need a dictionary, it has to be a paper dictionary. Right. All right, okay. Uh, if we have no more questions, then we'll proceed. I wanted to tell you something before uh, though, uh, that if you don't know what to do over your holidays, it's just a short, short advertisement. Um, there is this championship uh, that, uh, that uh, it's already more than 30 years old that exists in many countries. Uh, it's been organized in Switzerland uh, already for more than 30 years, but in the French speaking part of Switzerland. And uh, in 2008, so that was now uh, 13 years ago, we translated these things to German to also make it possible to participate in Zurich. And this is all done with ETH, with the Department of Computer Science, the Department of Mathematics at ETH and EPFL also. Uh, and so if you don't know what to do during the holidays and want to participate, you can just go to that website, solve the puzzles right there until January 15. There will be a semi-final in the ETH main building, of course, if, so if, if the situation permits, uh, in March on a Saturday. The national final will also be at ETH this year. Uh, this is new also in the main building. And the international final will be at EPFL, which is uh, also new. So if you, if you don't know what to do, uh, uh, then you can participate. Back then when this all started, I was still a PhD student or even a student and uh, it was done with the fees. Uh, so it was as part of the fees that we bootstrapped that uh, at ETH and then it, uh, it, uh, it uh, was uh, spinned off as, uh, as the local uh, association for Zurich. Uh, and uh, so this is why it's, uh, it's, uh, there are strong ties basically between ETH, EPFL uh, and, uh, and the championship. And uh, yeah, we are very happy uh, that they support us. So yeah, this is what I wanted to, to tell you if you like to solve uh, puzzles. All right, um, let me now switch uh, to the quiz game because we are going to start training and uh, um, proceed with the game. And I will explain to you how that works. Uh, maybe I explain first, then I switch. So there is this game. It's called Ice Kage 100 in the Swiss German or one against hundreds. Uh, it's a TV game where you have an entire audience uh, who answers questions facing one candidate. Uh, and then people just sit down uh, or are excluded whenever they get a question wrong. We, it's about finding the longest streak. So the, the person who answers, the, who has the, 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 the longest streak of uh, correct answers. Uh, and then either the candidate in front wins or somebody in the audience. And we are going to do something similar, but with the TAT. So what's gonna happen is everybody who wants to participate, all of you uh, in the lecture hall, please stand up. Uh, right now, you can stand up. And everybody in the Zoom room, uh, please raise your hand. You can raise your hand by pressing uh, right here, this button reaction. So if you press, and then you can, can click on raise hand, right? So I see, You're raising your hand, perfect. So take the time to do that. What's gonna happen is that uh, it's based on trust, right? Uh, if you get a question wrong, then you should lower your hand or sit down in the lecture hall. 
uh, and then we'll see uh, who survives. Uh, after this question, we'll also ask the TA team, so Monica, or if there are any other TAs, uh, they, they will join as well, there will be a TA answer. And we'll see if, uh, if uh, one of you manages to, uh, to uh, go longer than the, than the TA team. Do we have any other TAs in the room than Monica? Uh, yes, so it's Thomas. Thomas, welcome. Wonderful. <laughs> Hello. So I suggest that you speak over Mattermost uh, to coordinate on your answer uh, during the, 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 the while the students answer, and then I will ask for a single official TA team answer uh, at every question, right? Um, okay. Okay. So should I the ask here? the audience to stand up? Yes, exactly. In the lecture hall, please, everybody, stand up. <laughs> All right, and we have plenty, plenty of raised hands. Uh, I see 55 people who are participating in the audience. You still have time if you need. All right, so this is all based on trust, right? Um, so I'm going now to switch to uh, the other screen right here. Uh, this, we're gonna start, so here, for the first one, I give you more time just to make sure you're set up and so on and so on. So let, oh. let me start it. This is the first question. How many bytes are there in an exabyte? One million, one, uh, oh my, uh, billion, trillion, so it's a quadrillion, quintillion or sextillion. Million, uh, quadrillion, quintillion or sextillion. How many, how many bytes are there in an exabyte? So you can either use the EDU app on your uh, smartphone mm. or tablet, or go in your browser to eduapp-app1.ethz.ch, as you see on my screen, and log in with your ETH credentials. So I'll give you more time for that one. And then, of course, we will cap the time for the other questions. Forty-eight, so we should have at least fifty-eight. How many people are standing up in the room, Monica? Oh, everybody is standing. So I Eight? think we didn't uh, <laughs> we didn't understand exactly the purpose of standing up. I, I will explain. I will explain. For now, everybody is still standing. I, I will explain. I'm just waiting for everybody to answer. You will uh, understand wait immediately. Wait a second. I need just to coordinate with Thomas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Do, do not tell me directly your answer, right? I will ask you at the proper yeah. time because I need to synchronize with uh, stopping the, the questionnaire. All right. So if you let, let me do that in order to not to have to synchronize. When you tell me you're ready, I will stop. And then you can tell me, since it's the matter most, anyway, it's, uh, it's written there and I try. So, okay, so uh... do you have an answer? Oh, I have the answer, but I, okay. I have not voted. So oh, I no, don't you don't need to vote. Don't worry. The t for the TA team, you don't need to vote on the ah, ticker. Okay. That's so, not okay. necessary. It's independent. All right. Okay. All okay, right. okay. So we are stable at 71. I assume everybody was able to vote, right? There is nobody who is blocked. Otherwise, you can complain. Doesn't seem like anybody is complaining. So let me close. All right. Uh, so what was your answer uh, on Mattermost? Um, Monica? Uh, it's the third answer, the one the with... The third answer, so you, you had this one as well. All right. Uh, so indeed, an exabyte uh, is, uh, uh, is a one with uh, 18 zeros. The mnemotechnic way, the Ezosbrücke, that I use for that is that exa is like hexa, six uh, in Greek, and there are six groups of zeros, right? So it's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's a quintillion. Uh, and that's the correct answer. So now here's what happens. Uh, based on trust, again, I, I, I trust you. Uh, if you got your answer correct, then you, you remain, you can remain standing and uh, keep your hand up. Uh, and if you did not get the answer correct, then you should sit down uh, or lower your hand if you are in the Zoom chat. This is all based on trust. Uh, however, you can still continue to answer questions for the fun, right? You can still enter questions in the clicker app after that. Uh, it's just that uh, that uh, we, we are doing this competition in parallel for the longest streak, right? So I trust you that you lower your hand or sit down if you didn't get it right, and we'll do that at, uh, at every question, all right? 
Uh, so now I see the number slightly went down in the participants list. All right, and we'll do that for every question exactly in that way, right? We, we are just going to have a faster pace, but uh, that's pretty legit. All right, so let's move to the next question. What is state latency? Is it the latency required to write the last block of a file to HDFS? Is it the latency of a point query? Is it the latency of a range query? Or does it describe the behavior of parallel computations at large scales when there is a probability of al almost one that some nodes will take significantly longer? So as a reminder, even if you got eliminated from the longest streak, so from, from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the competition, you can still answer uh, on, uh, on Clicker. That's absolutely fine. You can still participate and continue to, to try to answer. All right, let me give you 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. All right. What did the TA team say on Mattermost? Uh, the fourth answer. The fourth one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's correct. Is the idea, it's just a probability thing. If you have a thousand or 10,000 uh, slots running in parallel, it's almost guaranteed that one of them is going to take forever. Right. And so this is what the latency is. And it's fixed either by duplicating the tasks and uh, picking the first that finishes or by hedging in the sense that you, uh, you, 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 you wait for the tasks that take too long and then you duplicate only this, right? So this is how it's solved. And here it's a case where writing faster code is not going to help. You really need to solve it with the hedged and deferred hedged requests. All right, so as always, uh, if you didn't get it right, then you can sit down or lower your hands. Uh, but of course you can continue to answer uh, in, in the clicker app in the future. All right, how do we deal with the allocation across multiple resources, CPU, RAM, network, in the context of uh, resource management? Is it called effective resource fairness, dominant resource fairness, dominant resource integrity, or effective resource integrity? So I'm going to cap at uh, 50 seconds. Twenty-five more seconds. 20 seconds, 15 seconds, answer randomly if you don't know, 10 seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hurry up, hurry up. All right, so we have uh, 22 correct answers. Dominant resource fairness is the name uh, of uh, how this is done. All right. Okay, so Thomas and I are saying second answer. All right, so you're still in so the game. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, so now we have 26 people still in the Zoom chat and in the lecture hall, 24 in the lecture hall. Uh, two people are standing. Two people are standing. Wow, this was, a, this was a tougher one, right? So dominant resource fairness. It's the name of the algorithm. It's basically looking for the dominant resource for each user and take, taking the, uh, this dominant resource uh, for the percentage of usage. All right, uh, 24 plus two, 26 people still uh, in the race for the longest streak, all right? But I have a question here. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. They are allowed to stand up again only if they answer correctly to the next? No, uh, no. It, we are looking for the longest streak, meaning that you should uh, you should uh, uh, you ah, cannot okay. stand up again. Exactly, it's, ah, okay. it's whoever survives the longest. <laughs> right? This, is, this okay. is how it works. You you need to make to have only correct answers all the way. The only okay. case we make people stand up again is if at some point everybody gets it wrong. That's the only exception. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. There's also a cap at 50 seconds. Which one of these syntaxes is least adequate for storing data? CSV, HTML, JSON, RDF.
30 seconds. Twenty seconds, fifteen, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and it's HTML. So what yeah, did the, the TA team say on matter most? Uh, we said also HTML. Also HTML. Indeed, HTML is not for data. It's for what you display in a browser, right? Yeah. So CSV is for table data, JSON is for tree data, and RDF uh, is for uh, uh, um, graph uh, data. It even have several flavors, flavors uh, with XML, JSON, and so on. All right. So HTML in that case. Uh, so... How many people? Still two. Still in the game? Yeah. Still two. Okay, 26. So nobody got eliminated this time. All right, here's the next one. What language is the most... Oh, what happened to me when I wrote that? Okay, there's extra letters. Which language is the most adequate for querying data cubes? Cypher, MDX, Nickel, or Spark? Data cubes, right? Twenty seconds. Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, and it's MDX. Cipher is for graphs. <laughs> Sparkle is for graphs. Nickel is for trees. What did you say, Monica? In the in the matter most? Uh, we said MDX, but uh, uh, you have to pay attention because you are already say, telling us the solution. So yes, I know, but I have matter most, right? I can I can see the matter most. Ah, but we are we are just me and Thomas on matter most. Oh, so you don't have the archive? Oh, you need to add me then to the to the to the chat. Well, <laughs> this is all based on trust, right? You're you're the TAs, but but. Uh, I'm assuming you have the archive. That, but uh, that, uh, I'm not uh, watching answer. the answers, so uh, I can, uh, yeah. Okay, I can, we can move it to. Uh, I will post uh, on the TA channel. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I mean, you're the TAs. I, I trust you, right? You're the TAs. Yeah, uh, well, because we tried okay. in the other in the other in precedent editions. What we tried is that I tried to close it at exactly the same time as your answer. Uh, but it's uh, it's not the best uh, approach because there, there's there can also be the delays over the internet, right? So this is why I thought that Mattermost uh, proves uh, provides a written archive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you said MDX, so you're still in the game, and we have 19 people in the Zoom chat and in the lecture hall. Uh, two. Still two. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Who created Hadoop? Was it Jeff Dean, Doc Cutting, Sanjay Gamawat, or Larry Page? Uh, Twenty seconds. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So, what did the TA team say? So uh, Thomas said uh, Sanjay, and I said Jeff. Aha, so <laughs> it seems that the students have won over the TA team collectively. So congratulations to you. Indeed, it's duck cutting. Do you know why it's duck cutting? And not Sorry, can you repeat? 
Do you know why it's not uh, Sanjay Gemarat or Jeff Dean? No. The What's idea it? is that doc cutting Hadoop is the open source version of what was actually invented at Google. So Jeff Dean invented these, uh, these technologies at Google as the original ones, but Hadoop is the open source and that was doc cutting who actually creating the, the, the Hadoop framework that, oh, all, that okay. contains HDFS, which is the GFS equivalent in open source and Hadoop MapReduce, which is the uh, open source version of the, of the Google MapReduce, right? So this is why it's doc cutting. All right. You know what uh, people say about Jeff Dean? Uh, he never, he directly commits his code because he doesn't need to compile it. The only, uh, the only uh, uh, times that he actually compiles his code is if he wants to uh, debug the compiler. That's uh, <laughs> part of the stories that are said about these uh, geniuses. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have 13 uh, people left uh, in the Zoom chat and in the lecture hall. Uh, everybody is enjoying uh, the seats. So everybody is sitting. All right, very, very nice. All right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Do document stores have schemas for their documents? Yes, like relational databases, it's a fundamental design principle or no, there are no schemas at all in SQL. This is uh, incompatible with documents. Uh, this is optional. It's possible to associate a schema with a collection, but it must be done before populating data. Or this is optional. It's possible to associate a schema in a collection, and, and this can be done after populating data. All right, five more seconds. Three, two, one, and zero. All right, so indeed it's the last answer. This is optional. It's possible to associate a schema with a collection and this can be done after populating data. This is the correct answer. So you remember, you don't need a schema for JSON. You don't need a schema in MongoD because it might be a mess, it can be completely heterogeneous. But if you want a schema, then you can. Uh, you can add a schema before or after populating the data. You can also do it later. This is called schema on read, right? So uh, this is how document stores work. And if you validate data, then you also have the option of storing it in alternative formats like Parquet and so on. All right. Uh, so we have seven people left uh, in the Zoom chats and how many in the lecture hall? Everybody is sitting. In Everybody the is sitting. All right. So all the people remaining in the race are on the Zoom chats. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, which one of these languages is not declarative? Is it Haskell, is it Java, is it SQL, or is it XQuery? Twenty seconds. Ten, eight. Uh, I don't let. I can't count anymore. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one, and Java is not declarative. It's imperative because you tell the computer what to do. Haskell is a functional and declarative language, SQL and XQuery as well. Okay, we have six people left in the Zoom chat. All right, so now we'll ask you every time if you had the time to answer, just to make sure that you don't uh, lose due to time. All right, D did you still want to uh, give answers? By the way, Monica from the TA team, you still want to give a collective answer? Um, I don't know. As I can you ask want. you if you got it right, basically. Did you get that one right? 
uh this one uh, yes i mean it's just me that answered in my head but <laughs> oh, okay yeah so you got it but right. for the uh, uh, the other one thomas and alex who just recently joined they answered the uh, the fourth answer so so that was the correct one so you got yeah. it right as well yeah all right uh do you know the highest hadoop version the latest one uh, that, that, oh, sorry, I forgot that it's not last January, it's, uh, it's uh, more recent than that. But what's the highest Hadoop version as of today? <laughs> well, I needed to come up with questions that are uh, that uh, that make it more complicated, right? Because otherwise it's too easy. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Have you all answered the, the six remaining students? Please complain if you need more time. All right. Okay, so I'm closing it. Three, two, one, zero. So it's three, three, one, the, uh, the latest one. Three, okay, we got it wrong. We said three, two, two. Yeah, it was the previous one, but I think three, three, one, as far as I know, is, uh, is more recent. All right, we have five people still in the race. All right. Next one. Is the document foo, foo, foo valid XML? Yes, no, question not precise enough, or it depends on the version of XML, one, zero, or one, one. Right, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, All right? Five, four, please complain if you didn't get a time to answer. Those who remain. All right, let me close now. Is the document still valid XML? The question is not precise enough, why? Anybody? Why is it not precise enough? Exactly, validity is not well formedness. We don't have a schema. You can only ask for valid if you have a schema and there's no schema here. It's well formed, but we cannot say if it's valid because we don't have a schema. Wonderful. Now we have Mihailo, Nico, and Samyak still in the game. I'm only using the first names uh, because this is recorded, right? I'm use, only using first names. So in 2014, Spark broke the gray sort records. How much time did it take for them to sort 100 terabytes of data? 34 seconds, 1.4 minutes, 23 minutes, or three hours? Uh, regarding the, the previous question, uh, it does not have one root. As far as I remember, it's a root element called foo with a nested foo element. Um, so I think it's uh, I think it's well formed. I can still check though. So there's an opening tag, then an empty tag, and then a closing tag. All right, 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, zero. It's 23 minutes that it took. See, it's 100 terabytes of data. That's a lot of data. So we have Nico and Samyak still in the game. All right, this is... Uh, getting close to having a champion. What is an RDD? Let me give you just 20 seconds for that one. Let's accelerate the pace. Is it a resilient distributed data set, a recoverable distributed data set, a recoverable dividable data set, or a resilient dividable data set? Five, 
five, four, three, two, one, zero. It's a resilient distributed data set. Indeed. Did you both get it right, Nico and Samyak? Right, so we need more questions. What very important stage of map reduce occurring between mapping and reducing can be considered to be missing in its name? That's something I said on occasion that it should be better be called with an extra step in the middle. Is it groups can shuffle or short sorts? All right, so did you both answer, Nico and Samyak? Yes, for Samyak and yes for Nico, all right. The answer is shuffle. Remember, there's shuffling in the middle. All right, nobody is lowering their hands, so you both got it right. The TA team too, you got this one right? Uh, we didn't participate. Oh, you didn't? Okay, so in your mind, basically, you're doing it in your mind, all right. Who advocated for the concept of data independence in 1970, which paved the way for the modern database era? Is it Alan Turing, Edgar Cot, oh. Jim Gray, or John, or John von Neumann? Mm -hmm. Let me uh, cap at 25 seconds. Oh, let me check. Nico and Samyak, did you both answer? See yes and yes, all right. Let's close. It was Edgar Codd, right? Oh, we have a winner. Samyak is our winner. Congratulations. You are this semester's champion of the great quiz game of the Big Data Lecture. Congratulations, applause, clapping. You know, in the Zoom chat, you can clap. In the lecture hall, you can make a big applause. Maybe we hear it in the microphone. Do we hear the cheering in the microphone? <laughs> yes, you see, oh, even whistling, <laughs> awesome. So congratulations, you are a big winner. Uh, I can still continue to ask questions just for the fun of it, right? Um, so uh, why is Hadoop called Hadoop? Uh, it was randomly produced with a password generator. It's a distortion of ADAP, which refers to the aggregation MapReduce uses most while reducing. Is it a reference to an episode of The <laughs> Simpsons with a lot of donuts, or is it named after the elephant toy of Doc Cutting's son? All right. What did the TA say? What do you think? It's the, it's the elephant. Yes, it is the elephant toy of the son of the cutting. That's why it's called that way. And you see it, by the way, the yellow elephant in the logo is yeah. that elephant. XML. This one is tough. I think I wouldn't even ask for that at an exam because I think we don't we even drop that from what I'm actually teaching. Maybe I mentioned it en passant, but. Uh... All right, five more seconds. All right, it's the first one. Huh. That's because in comments, you cannot have the double dash. It's forbidden. Uh, you can have it at the start and at the end, but not in the middle of the comments. Right. One more. What is a commonly used name for the small chunks in which HDFS files are divided into before getting spread over the nodes? Blocks, replicas, shards, or splits? Majority for blocks. Yes, indeed, it's blocks. Absolutely. 
uh, yeah, I, as you saw, they, they all mean the same thing, but I told you in every technology, there is a name that uh, is basically used. Shards is a generic name. Uh, splits is used in MapReduce, right? Every block roughly corresponds to a split, but as you know, it might not be the exact same limit because splits are based on records and blocks are based on bits. All right, I think we can, uh, we can actually stop, uh, stop here. What about quotes inside the tag? Should there not be quotes? Uh, if it's between the tags, that's okay to have uh, to have quotes, right? It's inside the tag name that you cannot have quotes, right? It's totally fine to have it as text between the tags. I hope it answers your question. All right, so I guess that's uh, that's pretty much it, right? So uh, thank you uh, for attending this lecture. Thank you to uh, to the entire TA team. Uh, for doing this wonderful job, especially in these challenging times. You know, it's uh, difficult for all of us, but uh, I think we managed uh, in this semester for all of ETH to do hybrid teaching. We managed for everybody who wanted to come in presence, you could come to the lecture hall. If you wanted to come and enjoy the lecture online, you could. You could. Uh, so uh, so uh, that's really great. Uh, 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 I appreciated the interaction. You were a wonderful audience, asked a lot of questions. We will continue to be here for you. Of course, we'll get, get a bit of holidays, but in January, uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to write it on the Moodle forum, uh, to ask for help. If you have issues with the environment, uh, we will be here uh, for you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a lot of emotions uh, with which I'm uh, closing the, uh, the, the semester. Um, so thank you for, for being so wonderful. Thank you for the TAs, everybody. Uh, and uh, I'll see you uh, very soon, right? Uh, enjoy as much as you can, rest, take some rest over the holidays uh, and uh, good exam preparation period in January. And again, we'll be here for you in January. So don't hesitate. So thank you, um, everybody. Monica, yes? Uh, there is one more question regarding mm -hmm. the exam. Mm -hmm. Somebody yep. wants to know if the exam uh, would be a combination of multiple uh, choice questions and numerical answers. It will be both. We will not have open questions, right? But there might be multiple choice. There might be boxes in which you have to enter a number or some text and so on. But it's all closed questions uh, in that sense. Uh, we will have boxes for you to put your queries, but this is ungraded. It's just for archiving in case you, you, you have questions afterwards. Uh, and there will be at the end the box for feedback. But apart from that, it's all uh, automated grading and, uh, and uh, closed questions, numerical, multiple choice, drag and drop that sort of things, right? Hope it answered the question. Any other question? Otherwise we just call it a year. <laughs> no, no more questions on the chat. So all right. everybody so, is just cheering for Christmas and winter all right. break. Yeah, wonderful. So thank you everybody again for all the interaction and uh, see you very soon. Thank you to the TA team for the wonderful teaching. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah.